Hello and welcome to this short demonstration of the new version of Femdesign 3D Soil, which is available in Femdesign 15. Before watching this video, I recommend you to watch the two previous videos about 3D Soil which are available on our webpage and on our YouTube page, Struisoft Official. I will start with the new features in this version and then I will model a simple basement foundation which is one of the news in 3D Soil. The Geo module 3D Soil is only available for 3D structure, so we begin with starting Femdesign 3D Structure. As usual when starting a Femdesign program, we begin with choosing a code, and in order to use 3D Soil, the option Calculate Soil as Solid Element must be checked in. The Foundation tab in the new 3D Soil version looks a little bit different. Beside the changed icons for soil and boreholes, there is now a new icon for filling replacement. In soil, we define the limit depth level, the default filling, the finite element size, the soil layers and the groundwater levels. In the new 3D soil, we got two other soil models beside the existing linear elastic model. A non-linear model appropriate for soft cohesive soils and a generic model where the user can define a unique stress deformation modulus curve. When defining a new soil type, it is now important to not just specify the deformation properties but also the strength properties because in the new version of 3D soil, plasticity in soils is considered according to the Moore Coulomb failure criteria. When it comes to the foundation objects, an important new feature is the possibility to attach insulation beneath the foundation and to verify the insulation bearing capacity in the foundation design. One of the main new features in the new 3D soil is the possibility to analyse and design basement foundations and basement walls, and that is what I will demonstrate in this example. I start with modelling the foundation slab, which will be 3 metres beneath the ground. Because this is a basement foundation, the option Remove Soil Above Slab will be chosen to create an excavation above the slab. It is possible to define the insulation beneath the foundation. Then I define the thickness of the foundation and its material properties. Now it is time to model the soil. The soil consists of two soil layers made ground of sand and silty clay. I define the deformation properties and the strength properties for each soil layer. For the silty clay I use a non-linear soil model because the soil's deformation properties depends on the stress levels in the soil. I define the deformation modulus for the unloading, the compression modulus by the different stress levels and the effective pre-consolidation pressure.
Then I go to the general tab and define the default filling. The limit depth of the soil and the desired average element size of the soil. Finally, I define the groundwater. In this version of 3D soil, it is possible to define several groundwater levels and then connect them to different load combinations. This feature makes it possible to simulate the effect of changing the level of the groundwater. After modelling the soil, I adjust the final ground level, the thickness of the different soil layers and the groundwater level in the borehole menu. It is no longer needed to define a foundation level for each borehole, instead it is now necessary to define a final ground level if it differs from the initial one. The last step in creating the structure is to model the basement wall. Now the model of the structure is ready and the next step is to create the loads and load combinations. Impose load, traffic load, self weight of the structure and self weight of the soil. The next step is to create the finite elements. As we see, the solid elements above the foundation are removed because I chose the option remove soil above slab in order to create an excavation. We can also adjust the size of the finite elements. The next step is to run an analysis. In the load combination setup, I choose to run a non-linear soil calculation. And in the calculation option, I choose to consider more Coulomb failure criteria. I check the stresses in the soil, the overconsolidation rate or OCR, plasticity in the soil, the deformations and the external and internal forces in the structures.
The final step is to design the foundation slab and the basement walls. These objects will be designed just like any reinforced concrete structure. I simply define the type and the size of the reinforcement and the concrete cover and I finally run the design. The required reinforcement is applied, the basement foundation and the basement walls are now designed.